Hi, I'm Kelly Asbury, director of Smurfs The Lost Village. Oh, everyone can just introduce themselves later. Making Smurfs The Lost Village was so much fun. I had a blast. I mean, people talk a lot about how complex and serious animation is, and it's not easy, but I have to tell you, the animators and everyone who worked on this movie are really just kids at heart. You can call me Director Smurf. <laughs> Good one, bro. Kelly is the perfect director for Smurfs because he's just a really funny guy inside and out. Hey, here's a present for you. <laughs> Working with Director Smurf is not always serious times. Coming to work every day was actually coming to play all day long. Let's all go have some fun. Yeah! He really brought the team together, and we made a great movie. We're Team Smurf, and we stick together. You know, one of the most fun parts of the process is casting. Casting for animation requires searching far and wide to find that special voice which fits just right into the mouth of your favorite character. The first person I cast was Jack McBrayer. Hi, I play Clumsy Smurf. Whoa, hey, guys! Hi, Clumsy. I invited Jack over for a meeting, and while he was there, he tripped and made a huge mess. So I thought to myself, wow, that, that guy's really clumsy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Clumsy, you're, you're hired. I don't know why I was cast as clumsy. I thought it was a, a shoe-in for hefty. It's sad, really. And then, like, Joe comes along. I'm like, ugh, you'll do in a pinch. <laughs> That's cute. Why are my muscles so big? Really, man? Next, I really wanted to figure out a part for Demi Lovato to play. What kind of Smurf could she be? What's her Smurfiness? And that's when I realized she's Smurfette all the way. I loved playing Smurfette. She's kind and compassionate and really takes care of her fellow Smurfs. She's the greatest. When Demi arrived, I knew she'd be perfect for the part. I searched long and hard for actors that were very similar to our beloved Smurfs, and everyone really is similar to their character. Well, almost everyone. Uh, Danny? Yep. The interview? Oh, cool! <laughs> Danny Pudi as uh, Brainy Smurf? I think that's excellent casting because he's so smart. My name is Brainy. I'm super smart. I'm the Smart Smurf. Terrible idea. Now, stupid reverse psychology never works. Uh, let's just say I had to help him out with some of the big words in the script. And they weren't even that big. Good work, Clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> there, of course, was the casting, very importantly, of Nosy Smurf. And after a long search, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna do this myself because I couldn't find anyone to do it better, frankly. I'm a genius. And I'd like to, if you don't mind, give you a little sample of it. What's going on in here? None, None of, of your, your business, business nosy. nosy. Well, all right. Thank you. Boom! Nailed it! I also wanted to include Ariel Winter in the cast. Well, I play all of the rest of the characters in the movie. Papa Smurf, Nosy Smurf, Baker Smurf, Farmer Smurf, Vanity Smurf, Grouchy Smurf. So I asked her to play the character Smurf Lily. She only played Smurf Lily? Wait. Why do you ask? Gargamel, Ezreal, Monty, all the girl Smurfs. None of this makes any sense. Next, it's time to focus on the actor's performances. How did you get into character? Oh, uh, let's just say there was a lot of blue paint involved. I'm method, so. I love snacks. Uh, that wasn't the question. Look at that one. Huh? He can't be normal. It's, uh, not hard to get into my character. It's what I do. Listen to him! Hefty can defend his friends from enemies. He can lift anything in Smurf Village. And he can be the one everyone can look up to. At this point, we just had to act it all out to really fine tune things. It's like a workout for my eyeballs. I like the way you think. Oh my jeez, Tapeats, I'm Smurf Blossom. Nice to meet you. I assume they still work if I don't shout freeze ball. Wow, wow, wow. Well. The most important part of making a movie is having a good script. The most fun that I have is creating this story, and then at the very end, you have this lovely film. <laughs> it works! Once we have a script, then we can create storyboards. We draw storyboards, and once they're done, we put them into what I like to call the storyboard cooker.
What we really do is we create a series of drawings, sort of like what you would see in a comic book or a comic strip, based on the script. And we draw out the action or the shots as we imagine them. And then an editor strings them together in a story reel, and we add voices and sound effects and music to that. So once that was all done, it was time to build the sets. It's really not much different than building a fort. Where are they getting this stuff? Well, what I truly do is work together with the team to come up with visual ideas and locations and pretty much fine-tune the look of the movie. Isn't this exciting? Now that the look of the film has been established, we let the artists start to really fill things in. Oh yeah, we use millions of color when we are designing, and my personal favorite is blue. I love blue. Don't be weird. You don't be weird. What I really do is draw and draw and draw. <laughs> the Smurf are already designed, so I designed the new character for the Smurf movie, and I take the one that Peyo designed and transfer them into a sort of a 3D world. How did you do that? So once the movie's been penciled in, we reach the final step. It's the real magic of the whole process. Yeah, we basically just have an animate button that we push. <laughs> Well, it's a giant red circle, and once we push it, the drawings just magically come to life. And voila, you have a movie. I have a very important job. I'm in charge of scheduling the button. <laughs> There's a little bit more to it than that. Of course, I noticed that right away. Slightly before you did, in fact. But seriously, what I really do is I work closely with the creative team to help schedule and plan all the animation and digital effects in the movie. Basically, me and my team bring the characters to life. We start off by testing different ways of making the characters move, figuring out the different nuances of the different characters. And we basically put all these pieces of the puzzle together, and that's what makes the final frame that you see on the film. Whoa, fascinating. As you can see, it takes many hardworking and talented movie makers to create an animated film. Most importantly, you just gotta have fun with it. I mean, after all, we're just kids at heart, right? We knew you were up to something. I'm Jack McBear. I'm auditioning for Hefty Smurf. Uh, Jack, don't you mean clumsy? I said Hefty Smurf. <clears throat> hey guys, I'm Hefty Smurf. Look at my big old muscles. <laughs> Good one, bro. <laughs> do you want me to do it again? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh. Huh? <laughs> 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 Being a Smurf sure takes a lot of work. But it's worth it for all my Smurf friends, like Smurfette, Brainy, Clumsy. I'm really freaking out, you guys! Hi, I'm uh, Joe Manganiello, and I'm here to audition for the role of Azrael. So just like whenever. Whenever you're ready. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Everybody, how are you? My name is Papa Smurf. Huh. I have no idea what I'm doing. Hi, I'm Arielle Winter, and I'll be auditioning for the role of Gargamel. A pinch of newt poo, a gram of calcified fungus from between the toes of a yak, and a piece of cheese I left in my underwear last week. <laughs> Hello, I'm Danny Pudi, and I'm auditioning for Papa Smurf. What is a Smurf? It's tiny, it's blue. Is it magical? Aren't we all magical? Welcome to Smurf Village. Our homes are made of mushrooms. Now don't eat the mushroom. They may be filled with poison. That was great. Thank you. What's going on in here? None, None of, of your, your business, business nosy. nosy. Hmm, well. All right. Greetings. Uh, I, as you probably already know, I'm Rain Wilson, and today I'll be auditioning for the part of Smurfette. 
So. Um, Rain, I think. I've been known to break a few rules during my day, so okay. Shall we begin? Oh, okay. <clears throat> Brainy, I hate Gargamel more than anyone, but we're Smurfs. We do the right thing. Hey guys, I'm Michelle Rodriguez. I'm here for the part of Smurf Storm. She's tough, she's a strong lady. She's a Smurf who can take care of business. Do I really need to audition for this? <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty obvious I'm perfect for the part. <laughs> Don't try any funny stuff, bug. Hey guys, I'm Hefty Smurf. Look at my big old muscles. Lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. Okay. Look at my beautiful dress and matching heels. Why, I aren't I? So I messed that up. Can I go back? <clears throat> Why, aren't I the prettiest Smurf you've ever seen? What? And then I have a funny voice, uh, also because I know it's uh, animation. Oh, oh, well, oh. Would you like to see how I cast spells? Pew, pew, whoosh. I'm clumsy. Look out. Oh, man. Oh, I'm gonna fall. I'm Smurf Blossom. Nice to meet you. Have you ever made fire with a rope and a stick? I sure have. Well, actually, not me, but Smurf Storm. She's really good at it. Have you ever kissed a dragonfly? Have you ever seen a rainbow? What about a double rainbow? What about a double upside down rainbow? What's your favorite song? Mine's hey, 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 hey. That is a really pretty dress. <laughs> I didn't get it, did I? We'll give you a call. That was great. I, I think we have all we need. No, oh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna get to the, um, the second one. So, Denise. Lovato, is it? Yes, hi, Smurfette. So nice to finally meet you. <laughs> you're an actress, right? Can you tell me about your last gig? I'm more of a singer. So, you're not an actress? Well, I was on Barney and Friends and Camp Rock. Barney, huh? So, have you ever read the Smurfs comic books? Wait, what? There are comic books? Okay, moving on. What makes you think you'd be right to voice me? I think we have a lot in common. We're both fierce and very resourceful. Hmm. And where do you see yourself in five years? Starring in Smurfs? The found village? All right. Do you have any questions for me? I just have to know. Are you a natural blonde? Whoa! Whoa! Oh, Debbie! Oh. Oh, okay, girl. You got the part. Yes, high five. Low four. I talk with a mouthful, uh huh, but I couldn't be sweeter. <laughs> Yup, I'm a cutie in my own way. I won't play, follow the leader. And I don't look like them, I ain't worried about it. I don't talk like them, I ain't worried about it. I know I'm a gem, I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about it, cause I'm a lady. Like them, I know I'm a gem. 
Welcome to Smurf Village. I'm Baker Smurf. I've invited a guest over to do a little cooking demonstration. And I do mean little. See if you can guess what we're making. Here we are, my kitchen. Why I remember the first time, oh, well, right to business, I guess. Don't mind little old me. We wouldn't want too many cooks in my kitchen. I'll just sit back and let you do the baking. Is that how you're gonna do it? Mm. Okay. How'd that cat get in here? Uh, all my ingredients are locally sourced. Farmer Smurf to table. Guess I'm just mindful like that. But being a baker is a dangerous job. You might say it's a whiskey business. Get it? Ooh, well, what's going on over there? None of your business, nosy. Hey, big guy, take it easy with my pots and pans. The recipe I would have used, but okay. Watch the flower! My kitchen is spotless. We don't want to attract any critters. Oh, too late! This is going great. You might say we're on a roll. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know where I get this stuff. Guess I'm just a real cut-up. Boom! Did it again! Have you figured out what we're making yet? Take it easy on the Smurf berries, Hefty. Save room for later. Well, that's not how I would have done it, but all right. Interesting technique. Looking good. Careful, careful. Nicely done. And don't try this at home. Let's heat things up a bit, shall we? Woo! Now we're cooking. 
This is Smurfette's favorite part. Mine too. Hey, get off my stove! That clumsy Smurf sure is a character. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. <laughs> Bring on the frosting! I think we finally have our answer. If you guessed we were making teeny tiny donuts, then you were right. Well, I suppose they're teeny for humans. To me, they're just donuts. Well done. If these taste as good as they look, I'm going to be your new BFF. That's bluest friend forever. All right, Brainy, don't take all the credit. Presentation is everything. And that's what we call a baker's dozen. <laughs> well, it was. At least they cleaned up after themselves. I hope you enjoyed this. And remember, sometimes the best things come in small packages. I remember the first time I saw the movie. That pivotal scene blew me away. The fact that Smurfette ends up being destroyed and then brought back to life because they basically pool their love. It's so moving. I remember saying to myself, God, there's like two minutes where there's no dialogue. And this is such an amazing scene. This would be an amazing spot for a song, for lyrics, because they would feel like they were coming from this character. And everyone kind of said, but it needs to feel like Smurfette's voice. And I started thinking, I have an old friend of mine with a wonderful voice. I'm gonna call her and see if she'll do this as a demo. And so I called Shaylee and she recorded it and I heard it was great. Guess I never really knew where I belong. So I brought Kelly in and said, I'm gonna play you something. If you think it's worth something, we'll play it for everybody else. And so I pressed play and he watched it and he just looked at me and goes, oh my God. I said, we have to have this in the movie. It enhanced the emotion of that moment completely. So it was in the movie from that point forward. And it's the perfect moment in this film for this kind of song. So once we recorded the orchestra and we wanted to record the final version of the song, that's when I called my friend KT Tunstall, who I just worked with. And KT's amazing. And she came in and she brought in some changes to the first verse. And then she and I did the second verse and the chorus together. The lyrics were very easy. Chris had put down this fantastic foundation. So it was really just finessing what he'd done. And of course, we got Shaylee, who was just an absolute and beautiful voice and perfect for the mood of that song. The song itself is really what Smurfette is going through, so it starts out very quiet. And by the end of the song, it's like, You will always find me in your heart. Or, you know, even bigger than that. Sometimes you feel like you don't fit in, and Smurfette feels very outside because she's the only girl in this village. It's also a very simple message that, you know, love is all you need. But really, it's about that presence of someone in your life, regardless of whether they're with you or not. At the end of writing the song, we did an awesome dance version. Really just out of passion for the song and the project. And it's so great because a good song you should be able to play in many, many different ways. It was a very amusing and fulfilling trajectory of starting off trying to make ourselves cry and ending up dancing around the studio like we were at a disco. I always wanted a real adventure, so I wanted the music to be lively. I, I wanted that sort of buoyance. The first thing Kelly said was, you know, this is a total reboot, and we really want to make this fantastic. We want to make it magical. Uh, we want to transport the audience to a new world. When Kelly first started showing me concept art, my jaw dropped because I was like, wow, this doesn't look anything like I thought it was going to be. It's this new place where flowers are alive and rivers are alive, and it all has this magical uh, world to it. And so then I, that's when I said, you know, well, how can we make that effect? The music. The music in this film 
is really part of the ride. The music takes you on the highs and lows and the emotional ups and downs, and it should. It should be as if the music is on that same roller coaster you're on when you watch this movie. I think my rations are coming up! When you think of Smurfs, quite honestly, you think of Lala's. You think of them singing that song that they sang in the TV show. And so I put together a choir that was a mixture of uh, adults and children. Getting that blend of voices that sort of give a little hint at the Lala song that we've always heard before and blended it in with the tribal, more cultural side of the girl village. It all came together in kind of this symphony. So the first thing that I noticed uh, when Kelly showed me the movie was there's a section where one of the girl Smurfs jumps down out of the tree and lands on a mushroom drum and, it, and actually bounces on it like a timpani head. That could be a great sound. What if we had something that went boom like that and then right next to that was a scene where one of the Smurfs actually takes this flower and blows through it. And at the time, there was just a regular horn there. But I said, well, what if that was an interesting, unique instrument as well? So I started getting this concept about the kinds of things that could be made into instruments. These are girls that live off the land and there's a sort of, they have a completely different culture than our boy Smurfs village. Smurfy Grove is a place where it's a little more primitive. They make their instruments and their all sorts of implements they use are found objects that they put together. Right away I started thinking about unique instruments that come from that world and I started also saying, well I want it to be otherworldly, but I don't want it to feel like anywhere in general. We decided to sort of make our own Smurf instruments or instruments that feel like, you know, they, they belong in this world, like they came from this world. You've got all kinds of ethnic instruments. I think we used Chinese membrane flutes, a little bit of duduk from the Middle East, and I used quite a bit of penny whistle, which is very Celtic. There's also a uh, chirango, which is Argentinian. By putting one of each instrument all mixed together with the choirs and everything like that, it just feels broad and worldly. It feels like it's from all over the world instead of one part of the world. Someplace tropical, someplace like a jungle, but you don't know exactly where you are and you can't really identify what culture this might be because it's something new. Wow! <laughs> now! Because the movie was so legitimately magical and emotional, then the music could be as well. You'll see that the music plays, I think, a bigger part of the film as an experience than most do, to basically give people an hour and a half where they're really feeling like they live in Smurfland. Who wouldn't want to live in Smurfland, right?
Come on, guys. I know if we work together, we can get that flag. We've got the skills. Clumsy, you make a big spectacle of tripping and falling, causing a diversion. I can do that. Hefty, you run defense. Got it. You can count on me, Smurfette. <clears throat> Forever and ever. I'll be right here, no matter what, through thick and thin. I guess what I'm really trying to say to you Brainy, is that- your Smurf Fairy Blaster invention will get us the rest of the way. Okay, Smurfette. Um, what are you gonna do? I, hmm, I, I guess I'm just gonna wing it. Okay, Team Smurf, ready? In three, two, one. Smurf Fairy Blitz formation, go, go, go! You too, Clumsy. so bad. Oh boy. Oh no! Clumsy! Clumsy! Out! At least I got further than last time! You did great, Clumsy! <laughs> Hefty! Worth it. Hefty! Out! Don't let my awesome, heroic sacrifice be for nothing. Go. Get that flag. <laughs> okay. Whoever blasted Hefty, come on out. Good job, Smurfs. But you gotta get up pretty early in the morning to put one over on old Papa Smurf. You may have invented this game, but it's time for the student to become the master. That's my girl. Wait, 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 what are you talking about? I... Oh. Smurfette? <laughs> gotcha! Run, Smurfette! Excellent, Smurfette! Go, Smurfette! Yes, I should have known. This is not built for a smurf of your- Rainy, please. Shall I refresh us all on how you came to be? The Smurfette origin story. Oh, oh hey, it's this good. ought to be good. Brainy, this really isn't necessary. Gargamel started with a lump of clay, which he brought to life using a magic spell. At first, he made you to be evil. Yeah, that's real nice. Then, I... Gargamel sent evil you on a mission to invade Smurf Village and destroy us all. Brainy, stop. But then, and this is the best part, Papa Smurf used his own magic to make you good, and you've lived with us ever since in happy, harmonious, Smurfy bliss. Fantastic wow. presentation, Smurf Bro. Bro. Really thorough. That story never gets old. I love a happy ending. Such pretty pictures. doing some quick calculations, you know, counting all the ways we can die tonight. Anybody care to hear the results? No. no. <laughs> Thanks, Hefty. Thanks, Hefty. Thanks, Hef. Anyone want to hear how the numbers got exponentially worse after we invited Clumsy? No. no. Okay, but just for clarity, 
Do you all not care what happens, or just find math boring? Yeah, it says the Smurf who almost blew up his friends to make an energy drink. It was a really uh, good drink. Uh, Thanks, Hefty. No problem. Thanks, Hefty. Thanks, Rindo. Don't mention it. Uh, uh. Asriel, get the Smurfs, get them! Get the Smurfs. Smurfs. Over there, the spell book. Excellent. Follow me. Follow me too. Ooh, I'll follow you. They'll follow me. Get the Smurfs. No clumsy. You stay here. Breakables. Here it is. The Smurf at Creation spell, page 74. Smurf hat? This is unlike any I've ever seen before. <laughs> 